So there was a phrase that came up in the reading I gave today when Ajahn Anand saw that there was that his being was without being. Please explain. So, in some respects, you know, I think the talk, you know, it is self-explanatory in as much as Ajahn Anand has a sense of being Ajahn Anand. And uh, just as you and I have a, a sense of being I'm a and you're Peter. And uh, that's conventional reality. And it's interesting that even after enlightenment, uh, these, these great monks and nuns still have their latent personality. And they're like Ajahn Chah liked Horace Mangoes. And uh, he liked Sticky Eyes. And, you know, before and after enlightenment kind of seem to stay the same from what I've heard. But you see that your being has no being, so that's a really profound sort of realization where the mind shifts. And Ajahn Anand used that phrase, it's as if the mind flipped out of the body and into a different stream of knowing, knowing in an undiluted way. So when that occurs, Ajahn Kalyana once said it's, it's as if just imagine that most of the mind is in Nibbana, it's in the Nibbana element, it's in the deathless, unconditioned experience. But it still understands conventional reality, and it's still in relationship with conventional reality. So, an enlightened being who could be looking at all of you, and knowing that you're completely empty, still smiles and says, good morning, or good evening. So, uh, I was listening to the Dalai Lama once talking about his particular prayers and he said you know when I say his prayers that he does daily prayers he says when I say I vow to benefit all beings as soon as I say I I'm instantly aware that there is no I and then when I say a vow to liberate all beings I'm instantly aware there are no beings and he said and that's and when you have that kind of experience, it's a very relaxed and happy way to be. But he still means it. So in, in his case, uh, he's intending to keep coming back and trying to help people. But there's enough wisdom. And he's like, full wisdom barami. So he's also having a different kind of an insight, or very similar insight, rather. And uh, so he, he's able to see the emptiness of phenomena, just as Ajahn Anand was investigating his body, and he saw even the earth element. He could see and break up the elements, and then he was able to see further that the elements themselves had an empty nature. So that's, it is empty, and they see it and they get it, not as a concept. On a really fundamentally deep level, they get it. That's really the truth. And when they living in a space where they experience the truth constantly, they still understand the language of delusion. And they can relate to other deluded beings conventionally. So this is where you have the conventional reality and the ultimate reality. So he saw that his being was without being. But he didn't die in that moment. The so Kilesa die. That uh, Yeah, it's deep. As far as deep things go, it's the deepest, isn't it? If you meditate a lot, you will have vipassana jnana. If you keep up your contemplations in your breath meditation, and, and then all this stuff becomes easier. When Ajahn Anand was talking about the fact that he saw the path and he knew it was the path, but it wasn't yet the attainment of the path. So there's a certain quality of insight where the mind will see Anicca, and Ajahn Anand explains that if you see any one of these three characteristics really clearly, impermanence or not self or dukkha, if you really see it with insight, direct seeing, you see the other two. Because they're the characteristics. If the mind has that truth discerning awareness and it really gets one very clearly, Anicca, then it also sees that it's not self, and it sees it's not worth hanging on to. Then it experiences emptiness. And what happens in inside experience, if it's not yet the attainment of the path, is not, not much longer you forget. 
but it's a memory and it's an experience that you have. It was a profound experience. And when you hear that kind of thing, it's like, oh, well, I remember when I had that experience. When I really saw emptiness. You know, it goes in on a very deep level. It's the basic. We have to keep, keep practicing and that becomes much less confusing. You really see, even just for a moment, that it's not what you think it is. It exists but not how you hold it to exist. Does that mean almost similar as mundane and super-mundane one? Yeah. Conventional is the same, yeah. Mundane and super-mundane. Conventional and absolute. Ultimate. This is an important point in Buddhism as well because we do have to act practicing Dhamma in accordance with Dhamma. So there is the Sila Dhamma there is the Dharma of convention, so we have to act according to conventions. Be good people, good, honest, ethical people. And then you, because a lot of, some schools go really crazy there, because there's nothing. You don't have to be ethical. They're kind of hedonistic schools. So we're lucky that the Buddha could explain conventional and ultimate truths to us. 